The pressure is on the people who run the world's big central banks. With economic growth stalling and price rises escalating, these are demanding times. An overriding goal of all central banks is to keep inflation low and stable. And their main tool is the interest rate they charge when lending their money. But increasingly, they're looking at other things as well. The head of America's central bank, Ben Bernanke, is looking at whether it should also target markets which get overexcited and create bubbles, the latest being the housing market in the US and the dot-com bubble before that. Our regular economic commentator, Roger Bootle, gave me his views on the latest idea. I think this really is the essential issue of the day and the absolutely fascinating one too. What's happened is that in targeting a narrow definition of price stability, essentially the central banks have been saying, OK, it doesn't matter if house prices or dot-com prices or whatever go up to seemingly crazy levels. We can't be sure anyway that this is a bubble. And if it is a bubble, then we'll deal with that and its consequences later once it's burst. That's the so-called Greenspan doctrine, which essentially central banks well, America and Britain, and I suppose also the ECB has been following that view. Interestingly, not the Bank of Japan. And the reason why not, of course, is that the Bank of Japan had the experience of the ghastly uh, bust after the bubble of the late 80s moving into the early 1990s. Now, Bernanke has looked at what's happened in the States recently with regard to the uh, credit crunch and the subprime problems and so on, and and obviously thought to himself, well, hold on, at the very least, we need to re-examine this doctrine. Maybe the consequences of just letting the bubbles burst and clearing up the mess afterwards are so ghastly that we've got to go back to basics and reconsider policy. And the idea is that if they see a bubble developing, let's take the housing market as an example, then they ratchet up interest rates uh, as fast as they can to try and burst it. Well, I think there are two approaches to this. One would be to try to use interest rates directly to target asset prices, and as you say, burst bubbles. I'm not sure that actually has very many supporters or indeed is very practical. The second is to use micro measures, that's to say particular regulations and variations in those regulations to restrict the activities of financial markets that seem to be creating bubbles. The sort of thing I have in mind is that in the UK until very recently inflation was terribly low and it was terribly low partly because of the beneficial effects of cheap imports from China and other countries. And this was also true, actually, in the Eurozone and for a long time in the States as well. Now, because inflation was low, central banks felt able to operate with very, very low interest rates. And those very low interest rates undoubtedly helped to push forward this extraordinary bubble we had in property prices. Now, if you've been following this alternative approach, approach that I would favour, what instead the central banks would have done is said to themselves, look, this in low inflation may be very temporary, we're not going to cut interest rates all the way necessary to keep inflation at the target rate. We'll allow inflation to undershoot the target and we'll set interest rates in a way and in a direction at a level which is going to be unhelpful to the developing asset bubble. Now that might not have actually stopped the bubble completely but boy it would certainly have moderated it. Instead we had a level of interest rates that was surely much too low. Roger Bootle from Capital Economics.